Hello, everyone. So it's uh, two o'clock here Eastern on day one of LRBS, and I'm super proud to um, introduce our friend Jim Hannon with ExxonMobil. It's a product performance principal with uh, with ExxonMobil. Um, we have just a little slight tech um, uh, situation where we can't see uh, Jim's camera, uh, and I'll be helping him with advancing the slide deck, but i um, super excited for Jim to be talking about mobile solvencer. Um, and Jim, I'll, I'll hand it off to you now. All right, thanks very much, Josh. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you good. Okay, very good. All right, hey, thank you for all joining today. And I did wanna to talk to you about a product that we're pretty happy about. We've had great success. And it's a product that's been needing in our lineup and also in the industry and i think you, after we go through this discussion today uh, i hope you feel the same so this is a product called mobile solvencer and it's been helping customers on a number of different fronts to improve operations and so next slide so we'll talk a little bit about where varnish occurs and the impact and you've heard a bit a bit about that in previous talks too and some updates and some good testing that I appreciated from polaris uh, we'll then talk about the introduction of mobile solvencer we'll have some case studies and then time for some questions so the first element next slide please the, the first element when we're working with the customer is understanding their operation and, and their timing of things. So we ask for a number of key pieces of information, including any oil analysis data, and we might decide we need additional testing. Uh, we want to have any equipment inspection. So oftentimes that's looking at servo valves, last chance filters, if they have an opportunity, if they've been into their uh, hydrogen seals, uh, those types of things will give us a pretty good indication. Then also understanding the oil service hours, because uh, we have an idea of how long oils last until we start to see some potential issues. And it's really oil dependent. And then we ask about what is the in-service oil? Uh, we ask about operational issues, whether they were having sticky servo valves, they were having elevated bearing temperatures, they were having hydrogen seal issues, those type of things. And then we ask about the operating profile, the cyclical turbines versus base oil or base loaded turbines. And then the lastly is the outage schedule, because this helps us determine the best path forward. And some 
what we have here on this mobile turbine oil triage strategy is taking all those elements and then deciding what makes the most sense for the customer based on where they are with all those uh, concerns. Oftentimes a turbine may be at 55,000 hours and wondering if they could get another 10,000 hours and looking at their turnaround schedule. So we take all that information uh, that we described and then use that to come up with a plan. And, and the plan could involve mobile solvencer, but it might involve a, a more heavy duty cleaner called a mobile system cleaner, or maybe it's just a drain and a displacement flush, or at the easiest case, it's just a drain and a refill. So there's a multitude of path forwards we could take forward, but understanding these key data points that are on the left-hand side of the slide here, uh, help us give the customer uh, the best direction. So we'll just talk about frame seven FA on the next slide. And the EFA, the key areas of concern uh, are three, three different places. We've got the potential sticky servo valves, often known as the, the Moog valves. And you can have a problem in the last chance filter or in the servo valve itself or a pencil filter that's upstream of the spool piece. Then you can also see uh, elevated bearing temperatures in, in the bearings themselves. And that's seen in, in your distributive control uh, relay. And, and you'll see those temperatures there. And then lastly, a concern can be in the FAs is the hydrogen seal failure. And that's where you build varnishes in that hydrogen seal and then it retards heat transfer and then that retarding of heat transfer then uh, can overheat that seal and cause uh, a metal fatigue and and then eventually a seal failure all right next slide and then the next slide we'll be introducing mobile solventer So mobile solvencer is a customized formulation based on Fluidtex decon technology. Uh, it's blended in in group five, 50 centistoke at 40 degrees C base oil. And the important thing to consider is it contains no additives. So in some of the other cleaners that we have or that are in the market, they have additional additives that can eventually come out of solution or impact operation for foam or demulsibility or long-term oxidation stability. So this oil soluble cleaner is added at between three and five percent to your current oil and then we're seeing it without impact to performance. This solubilizing agent deposits the varnish to help maintain cleanliness of the turbine, bearings, seals, hydraulic systems without impact on seals, paints, and coatings. It is fully compatible with lubricant and hydraulic oils uh, formulated with API group 1, 2, 3, and 4 based oil. Uh, it does not contain service active chemistries that can cause fallout or transfer of deposits. Uh, solvents are resists formation of deposits as it degrades even at extreme temperatures. Okay, next slide. So we see three primary uses. One is a conversion enabler. The second is in troubleshooting. And the third 
as in life extension. And we've got a pathway for each and, and a dosage rate for each. And we look at the use of them back to the, uh, the chart that I had that would show you the triage. And we decide what makes sense for a customer to get them to their goals. So there with the conversion enabler, we put it in at a 5% concentration approximately one month prior to the change. And then if things line up, we're just doing a drain and a confined space entry cleaning and then a refill. So this reduces the need for that secondary displacement flush that had to be done in some of the more aggressive cleaners. Again, there may be some times where that more aggressive cleaning is needed, but most of the time we would say that the mobile solvents or approach would, would get the job done and then you don't have to go through the cost and the timing of that second uh, flush. Then we look at it for troubleshooting and this can be for a number of different reasons. One is elevated bearing temperatures. The other is uh, excess filter plugging. And this helps actually clear the path through a filter to diminish uh, filter fouling. Then we look at potential use for valve sticking. So it helps cleans out the valve to minimize those kind of operational issues. We would add it at a 3% uh, concentration and then monitor bearing temperatures, filter delta P, and then servo valve operation. And then lastly is life extension. On an existing oil of charge, we would take a look at it and decide if it was a candidate to push the, the life of the oil and that's where we would look to add it at a 3% concentration. And then going forward, we would continue with our oil analysis and look at the oxidation stability and deposit formation characteristics in the oil analysis. So next slide. And now we'll talk a little bit about some of the test data. So at ExxonMobil, we pride ourselves in our test rigs. And we developed these rigs to replicate what you would see in the field, but in an accelerated manner. And it, by doing so, we can look at oil comparisons from A to B to C. We can also look at the influence of things like our, our mobile solvencer. And in this particular example in this rig and you can see in the upper right hand corner the layout of the rig where basically we've got a pump a relief valve a heat exchanger a filter a flow meter a reservoir and the back to the pump and what we look at primarily is the deposits in the reservoir so down below you'll see the visual results and that's the reservoir that is uh, about a 10 liter can that uh, is stainless steel. And that what they do is on a certain frequency, we drain the oil out and then we photo document the deposits or the cleanliness of, of this reservoir. You can see over on the left, a new reservoir and we give it a scale a rating of a 10 and worse would be a would be a one. So here's a 10 looking perfect. And in this particular circumstance, we had an oil and we aged it to 750 hours. And you can see our rating on it was a 3.7. So then we added our mobile system cleaner and we ran it for 72 hours. And the rating improved to a 6.6. .6, and you can see visually 
the cleaning that it did. Now, we see Mobile System Cleaner really helping on the soft deposits that are not what we would call uh, hot, a hot deposit. The hot deposit needs a little bit of agitation that is often brought to you by a moving bearing. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so here we've done an aging study. And in here, we took an oil, and it's classic TOS, T, T test, the toast test. And we aged this oil, and you could see how badly this oil failed in particular, when you look at like the MPC number, a delta E of a 55.7, and then also look at the weight of the residual uh, at 576 milligrams. Then we added 3% mobile solvencer and ran it for a period of time. And, and you can see how readily things cleaned up, particularly that MPC dropped now to a 7.6, and then the weight residue has dropped down to 18. Also, you see there's no real impact on the acid number and no real impact on ruler, appreciating that there's going to be some test, rely, or test accuracy when you're looking at those kind of tests. Here's just some more backup data. I won't go through each each line, but just to show you that the impact of solvencer does not impact the impact of the finished oil. So we did the testing, all, looking at viscosity, looking at foam, air release, rust, demulsibility, uh, ruler, and metals. So the beauty of it is you see no change in your typical oil analysis data, we would expect to see your MPC and your ultra centrifuge uh, numbers drop. Uh, next slide. And next slide. So we've done a comparison with some competitive uh, cleaners in the market and you can see that after a period of time the six weeks the mobile solvencer looks very good at three percent and one of our competitor oil cleaners after six weeks you know doesn't and and it's pretty telling uh, next And we'll go through a few quick case studies here. Uh, the first is a power plant, GE Frame 7 EEAs, that had used our process where we used our mobile system cleaner to do the conversion. And we discussed with the plant owners about a way to speed up the process and save some, save some cash. And they went through this and they were thrilled with the, the results and also thrilled with the savings that they calculated to be approximately $104,000 on two GE Frame 7 EA turbines. And next. Here's a plant where that was having elevated bearing temperatures and the oil analysis was looking good. We had MPC of a six, a UC of a one, particle count looked good, uh, but they were still having these elevated bearing temperatures. So this is where we got in to take a look at the potential impact for it to remove some, what we would call hot varnish that's in these high-speed bearings. So solvencer was added at a 3% rate, and within days, they saw a 10 degrees C drop in 
uh, in oil temperature, excuse me, in bearing temperature. Uh, next slide. And here's an application in a gearbox that was a little tricky in that the gearbox was uh, using an ISO 320. And as I mentioned before, the solvencer is 50 centistoke. So we had these hot bearings and it was causing unit shutdowns at a significant cost. So we took a look at the potential to fix the problem by using mobile solvencer. And what we did was we pre-blended solvencer in an ISO 680 gear oil and ultimately getting a final treat rate of 3%. So the equipment's back in service and we have seen uh, very clean bearings after the fact. We pulled the bearing and we could see on the right, you could see the impact that it's, it's a clean bearing surface. Okay, next slide. We've used it for life extension. Here we have a compressor and after a period of time and varnish problems that were causing them to change the oil out every three years, we put the mobile solvencer in and you can see the one key attribute being MPC had dropped significantly and stayed and stayed low for a prolonged period of time. Okay, next. And so in conclusion, we're finding this cleaner, if you will. It's, it's really just a base oil. Um, but it, it's helped us in significant ways where we look at it as a conversion abler. Uh, it helps to troubleshoot bearing temperatures, filter delta P, and sticky servo valves. And it also supports oil life extension. So we see it as a cost-effective solution to maximize oil, oil life. So with that, I'll uh, open it up to any questions. Hey, yeah, just jumping in here, here um, for for questions and um, and also those that want the code for attending the the, the session for the uh, the, the challenges. Um, so there is one question from Greg. I don't know if you could see it uh, coming up, but it, you know, furthering the uh, the the keynote discussion, um, can mobile solvencer be used in space? <laughs> That's a great one. I can't see why not. Right. So I, I guess is there is there varnish creation in, in those oil wetted right? the fluid, right? Liquid oil wetted systems in space. You don't have to answer that. That's, it's an open question, right? That's yeah. for, uh, that's for, uh, um, Juan, but, um, right. Any, any other questions from the, uh, from the field? I know there were some technical issues. Uh, with a few people that couldn't quite access the presentation. This is recorded. We'll have it available to, to those people um, as and when. Um, any any other um, comments, Jim? Yeah, I'd offer, offer that a lot of people think, well, now that I'm getting varnish out of off of my equipment pieces, should I put an exist, additional filtration in? And the, the thinking is not an immediate need uh, in that uh, you look at uh, GE frame seven FA reservoir holds 6,200 gallons. And the amount of varnish that's causing the problem is very small, but it goes to the wrong places, kind of like cholesterol in your blood. 
So you get that back in a solution and you've got 6,200 gallons for where that oil and varnish can reside. And the need for external filtration wouldn't hurt, but it's certainly uh, not needed. And maybe look at that as a secondary option if you weren't getting the results you were looking for. Excellent point on the, uh, the, the filtration aspect. So you have two really good questions that just came in. Um, so one is, you know, top up of the turbine oil. Do you see any changes in the temperature bearings? If you have elevated bearing temperatures. And so we see that largely in the high speed compressors that run at like 50,000 RPM and they start building a varnish uh, that retards heat transfer. But if your system bearings were clean, then you would not expect any impact of temperature reduction from the introduction of solvents or because its job is really to clean those bearings. And, and on that, one other key point is it can clean carbon related deposits. So maybe the, the deposit has a lot of phosphorus in it and that's okay. If it's carbon maybe is the glue that holds it to place, then we pull the carbon out and the, and the phosphorus and the complete deposit goes away. Excellent. And then another great question. So is moments are just for uh, mobile products? No, we see this to be used in group one, two, three, four, but not group five. So we've got a high degree of confidence in multiple products. Great. And uh, Ilona's asking, do you see mobile solvents use as counterproductive when used in tandem with varnish filtration that only focuses on insoluble varnish removal, depth media filter, for example? No, I think they both add value. And the, uh, the those high depth media filters do do a nice job in removing the uh, in, insoluble varnish. And then uh, this also could be used in parallel. So I don't think that they're counterproductive. I think they could support each other. And the question is, do you, do you really need that additional filtration? Got it. And, and uh, Peter is asking, uh, can you share what kind of gearbox is that in your application? I suppose it was mineral oil. Uh, the oil was a mineral oil and the gearbox was a rank. What was the uh, the vis grade of that oil? Oh, a 320. 320, okay. Excellent. So we, I think we have time for more if anybody else has uh, questions. Um, we looks like one just showed up. So if the system is very dirty, high MPC, is it okay to use only 3% or does it have to increase more to the, the five, say six percent? Well, our go in position would be three percent and then monitor. We have a top end cap of 10 percent. So we would start at three percent and see if we get the results we're looking for. Excellent. Okay, I think that's all the time we have. Um, a lot of fans out there saying thanks a lot, Jim, and we uh, we appreciate your time and thank you all for uh, bearing with us through these uh, technical difficulties. Uh, and Jim, thanks for for sharing your time and your expertise. Oh, happy to be here. Thank you. All right, take care, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye.